all in the same room over 200 years ago. All great men, all gifted men, all talented men, but they weren't all suited to the same task at the same time. And the question is, who's the right person for this moment in our country's history and for this Senate seat? Because folks, we've got to get this one right. Because I am convinced of this. The nominee that we choose must defeat not only Tim Kaine, but Barack Obama. Because if that nominee cannot defeat Tim Kaine, Barack Obama will win this state. And if Barack Obama wins this state, he will likely win another term in the presidency. And folks, I don't think our country can stand that. I really don't. Oh, yes. Let me introduce you all to my mascot. We call it the Jackson Axe. Some people call me Axon Jackson. But this is a symbol, folks. It's really just a symbol. But my campaign manager, who is a Tea Party person, a Rand Paul supporter, and, and believes in me as well, uh, devised this because of a speech I gave where I said, we don't need to take a scalpel to the budget as the president suggested. We need to take an ax. He said he couldn't sleep that night. And he envisioned this. So he, and by the way, made in America. Uh, be careful with the Arlington. This. They didn't uh, consider that a weapon. Yeah. Arlington, so be careful. <laughs> oh, Arlington do? Oh, yeah. Well, I thought it was just DC. And 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 airports. And, 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 and airports. And, air and, and airports. <laughs> you might have to get a foam rubber one. Okay, put it back in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but look, we got to be serious about about really shrinking the size of government, not just playing games and you know word games. Because have you all heard the president say that he is he has been the most fiscally responsible president uh, perhaps ever in our history? Yeah, so, and, and right, so honest and modest, <laughs> right, right, exactly, right, and honest too, right? Uh, so, so you know. We, we've got to do something about the situation. It's, it's going to take leadership. Uh, I loved your speech, and I agree those are all the big issues. I'm going to ask about a smaller issue, which is what's your position on which levels of government, if any, should be doing things about medical marijuana and marijuana and other drugs? Say which levels? What, what, do you think any levels have responsibility, and what would they be? Um, you know, I, I really have to think through what the federal laws say with regard to that. I know there's been some conflict between California and the federal government on medical marijuana. Um, so rather than trying to answer the technical legal question that you, in some sense, pose, let me just see if I give you my philosophical view. Um, I, don't, I don't use drugs, obviously, uh, but I have. Um, I, I am bothered. I'm, I'm really bothered. I have to say this is a minister who tells all my people, you know, it's better not to do drugs, it's better not to even use alcohol. Not that you know, I think using alcohol is a, some sort of mortal sin, I say, but you know, it has a way of getting control of people's lives sometimes. So, you know, I think you're better off to stay away from it. But, you know, no, don't anybody guilty. an Irish Right. Well, well, Audrey, when she knew that I was a minister, when Audrey first came to work for our campaign, she said, I just want you to know, I do drink wine. Is there a problem? I said, no, Audrey, that's not a problem at all. Man, anyway. uh, but, but let me say, I, I, I really am bothered by the idea that we are putting people in jail for getting high. Uh, and you know, it's interesting. Somebody who I probably don't have a lot in common with. Who's the uh, the guy? Who, uh, is he a magician or an entertainer? Penn Gillette. Gillette, yeah. You know, who doesn't use drugs or drink? Right. But you know, he really spoke to my heart, I, and I, I had to take a step back when he said, "The president has confessed to using cocaine. He's confessed to using marijuana. The only reason he is president is that he didn't get caught." If he had been caught with it, his life would have been completely different. Now, folks, I could say the same thing. That's what arrested me about. I could say the same thing. And I, I don't think we should be locking people up and saddling people with felonies because they have used recreational drugs. Now, I think the whole issue of the drug industry poses an entirely separate question, you know, about whether 
completely legalizing drugs would eliminate the crime associated with it, I happen to think wouldn't do that. But I am committed to this idea that we should not be locking people up uh, for the recreational use of those drugs, at, at, at the very least, those drugs that we agree don't put people in a position to do things that are going to destroy their lives and, more importantly, the lives of others. So I, I, I may not have given you a complete answer, but, but I just wanted you to know where I am philosophically on the issue. Yes. Quick question. Um, I guess it's a two-part question. One is, what books of the founders or what writings have you read that influenced your, your principles? And two, which of the founders do you most relate to? Well, let me answer the second question first, because it's an easier one. Um, George Washington is my favorite American hero. I talk about him a lot. Um, he is an icon for me, uh, because I believe that without him, we would not have a country. Uh, I believe that his integrity and his honor uh, guided us through the most difficult moment. And had he not had that courage and that integrity, uh, we might have ended up with a king who's still uh, 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 you know, a satellite of Great Britain. Um, so he is the person who I think about a lot when I think about service and government. And the thing about him that really moves me most at a time when people are so hungry for power, so hungry for, you know, for influence. Here's a man who they would have made king, and he didn't want it. And he, he held power so loosely. Uh, what was important to him was freedom and honor and integrity, not control over people. So, so he's my favorite. Um, no particular book comes to mind at the moment. I've read books about the Founding Fathers more than their own writings, because I've read some of the Federalist Papers, um, and I've read numerous writings. Uh, in fact, if you visited my house on our coffee table, it's a big book of the writings of uh, George Washington and the writings of Abraham Lincoln. Um, and, you know, I've read Thomas Jefferson and, and, and a lot of what he has said, and so I've been influenced by him. In fact, not too far from the table, a bust of George Washington and Thomas Jefferson on top of Arcana. Uh, I, I think that one of the things that we need to do in our country is, is help our people to become more familiar with our founding fathers again and to understand these were not perfect men, but they were extraordinarily inspired and ingenious to have accomplished what they accomplished. And so uh, I hope that answers your question. So I, I read quite a bit of them, uh, but, but I can't think of any particular book by one of them uh, that's, that I've read. We probably have time for one more question. Well, may I just say, if, I'm happy to take another question, but let me just say for the record, while I'm not a politician, I've learned, my campaign staff has told me, I ask for your vote. They say ask, and I'm asking. Um, I ask for your support. Uh, for those of you who believe in the power of prayer, I certainly ask for your prayers. It shouldn't be any surprise to you. I would ask for that. I'm a minister. Um, I ask for your donations if you'd like to support our campaign. In fact, we usually have an offering vessel, which would be a, that would be an interesting juxtaposition, uh, an offering vessel right next to a bar. <laughs> but believe me, I'm shameless when it comes to taking up an offering. I'd be happy to brag about having taken up an offering in a bar. Um, but I need more than that. If you decide, as many apparently have, that I'm the right person for this moment, I need your help. Uh, I need you to tell people that you discovered another candidate in the race. I need you to tell them that you're supporting me, ask them to do the same, send them to my website, uh, ask them to go out and vote, volunteer to work for us at the polls, Look, ours is a truly insurgent candidacy. I had never run for statewide office, for office, let alone statewide office. They said I'd never make the ballot. I did. And it wasn't by paying anybody $2 or any amount of money for signatures. Every signature we collected was collected by a volunteer. The state election board told us that we had the highest rate of ballot signatures of any candidate they've ever seen. I said, well, there's a reason for it. All of our people were actually collecting signatures because they believed in me, not because they were going to get paid, and whoever you were, just sign the thing. I'll get two bucks for it. Uh, we have on our website what we call a home campaign office. 
And what it means is you can become your own campaign coordinator. 